Good afternoon, everyone. 18th Fissure opening in Kilauea, hot lava. I'm going to bring you up to the Arctic and we're going to talk about Hudson Bay ice anomalies. Green circle on the map, Hudson Bay. That red is still solid ice cover up there. Canadian Ice Service hasn't even updated their charts because there's been no melting going on. Typically by this time of the year, they'll be 30% melted off. Looking at Great Lakes ice anomalies over this last season. And this video is brought to you by Hemp Lucid. CBD oil for your mind, body, and spirit. See how this can benefit your lifestyle. All the links in tonight's video are in the description box below, along with Hemp Lucid, so you can do a little more research on CBD oil. Eighteenth fissure opens in Kilauea. It is astounding how powerful this new fissure is. Everybody's on tap waiting for the steam eruption up on the Kilauea vent. See how that goes. Since we're talking about extreme heat, let's talk about cold anomalies. That green circle, center of Hudson Bay, I tried to choose the warmest spot and it's still minus 8.2 Celsius. For those of you in the States, zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point. Other areas in the periphery of the bay up there are 17 and 18 degrees Celsius below zero, which pushes that into the low teens in the Fahrenheit digits. I've been watching the Arctic and Hudson Bay ice anomalies. So when we do talk about Hudson Bay and the Eastern Arctic, here is a close in in the different regions. You can find this on Environment Canada's ice page. Talk about the Fox Basin. Hudson Strait, Northern Hudson Bay, and the Southern Hudson Bay. Now, I wanted to see what was going on with the melting up there because this will be indicative of how the changes are going because Baffin Island was known as the glaciation seed point in the last major glaciation across our planet. So if we were going to look up there, we would look for bunching ice and different types of cold anomalies in that Baffin Island area. Perhaps that's a thermostat driver for our northern hemisphere with the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation. But I do believe Baffin Island is a key to something cooling or warming on our planet. So taking a look at last season, as you can see, the melt totals was about 25, maybe 30% of the ice had melted out of Hudson Bay by this point. We're in May 14th, May 21st of last year, 2017. We're right in the same exact week, so we know for the comparison what it is. Hudson Bay, still at nearly 100% ice coverage. This is why they haven't been updating any of their charts up there for the Canadian Ice Service, which I'll show you in a second. But onto the anomalies, anywhere it's red, that is solid ice cover. And then I know the purists out there will say, well, it's not about the coverage, it's about the thickness. So if that visual doesn't really show you a representation of how much extra ice is there this year, maybe this will. That dark green is thick first year ice. The lighter green is the medium first year ice and that really olive at the northwest up there in the Fox Basin, that is thin first year ice. So that dark green, how much of it is still thick first year ice that remains? And what I told you before, Canadian Ice Service has not updated any of their ice products around the Hudson Bay since last year. Back in November, there's still no melting going on, so they literally can't update the ice charts. There's no conspiracy out there. It's just proving that there is far more ice this year than in previous years. Instead of looking at the bar chart graphic representations coming over here to the actual ice maps that I showed you before, the red and the green to show ice coverage totality or the thickness of the ice. Again, we're not seeing any updates coming through because there's been no melting. So since I was there in the Hudson Bay area and I saw the Great Lakes ice map next to it, I said, well, let's pop that one up there because I know they had the 1980 to 2010 median. That's that light green, neon green line that's running through the center there. Now this is for 2018 season. You can notice in February how far above that is from the norm. And also, as we're tapering out of the season, you can see that there was still above average all the way from March through April and May. 
Now this is an interesting graphic here as well. This is the same week comparison for ice coverage of this exact same week and let's say 1980 clear to the far left of the chart. This is the exact same week but in 1980 how much ice was there comparatively. We're over on the far right here for the 2017-18 season of May 7th. Now what do you notice over on the right side of the chart? I see exceptional ice in the year 2013-14, 2014-15. And then again, here we are in 2017-18. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you want to send me tips or images, you can send them through adapt2030 at oilseedcrops.org. And also the Grand Solar Minimum is just leaving us these fingerprint marks across the planet. We're starting to see out of season storms. We saw that strange cyclone down off of Chile in the Southern Ocean. You got all time record rains all over the planet. Now we have this late ice events. Now we have blizzards down in Southern Australia. And somehow the media just keeps feeding this engine of it's all CO2, it's all CO2. But they forget the biggest driver of our climate, that big yellow thing in the sky called the sun.